Now in Substance Painter, we're going to drag in the low res mesh. And that will bring up this dialog box. For the document resolution, let's work in 2K, even though we'll export in 1K. And then just click OK. So here's the mesh we made in Sculpt GL. Now to bake the normals, we go over to Texture Set Settings. And then down under Bake Mesh Maps, we'll click this button and change the output size to 2K. And then in High Definition Meshes, we'll add this mesh, the high res one here. And then the defaults hopefully will work. And then we don't have any ID maps, so we can turn that off. And then bake selected textures. Now if we do a side-by-side -side and compare this original one to this new one, it looks like it did a pretty good job at keeping all of the detail. Looks like a few areas might be a little bit sharper. Like up here, this maybe got a little sharp. But overall, I think it looks really good. So now we can start texturing. So we can switch back to our Layers tab. Now again, we're going to use Substance Source to get a base texture down and that's located inside of the Substance Launcher. Now we want to find a fleshy material, so let's search for flesh. And this flesh carbonized is what we'll be working with. So I'll click the Ascend to Substance Painter button. Now in Substance Painter, we should see that appear somewhere down here. Looks like it is right here. So we can just drag this directly onto our layer stack. And you can see you get really nice normal map details here. It's a pretty good start. And as is with, I think, all of the materials in Substance Source, it comes with some variations. So we can try raw wounded flesh rotting flesh, or pus flesh. <laughs> now for the skin color, I think it might be more of a reddish tone. And then for the carbonized skin color, maybe this is a kind of darker brown. Now we have a lot of awesome normal details here, but they're getting a little obscured by this material. So I'm going to use maybe the AO pass to accentuate some of these details. So I'll make a new fill layer over here. And the base color will be the AO map. So in the shelf here, we'll go to project. We can see all the maps here. With AO having the sunken parts be darker. Actually, for this one, let's use the curvature map because it has more of those kind of sharper details. And if we switch to the base color, this is the actual map that we're looking at. So we get a lot of nice detail where all these kind of sharper points are on the mesh. And you can see it goes from gray to light gray. So if we were to screen or add this, it would be way too bright, which we can see here. Obviously that's way too bright. In this fill layer with the curvature map, we can right click and just add a levels here. And we can crunch this so the blacks take over most of these kind of flat areas. And if you want, you can drag this to kind of bring them up those brights. But because we don't want this effect to be too strong, I can just leave this over here. Now turning back on this material, that way we can see the lighting effect. You can see you get some nice kind of lighter highlights there. And right now everything is pretty shiny, so in this fill layer, 
because we have all these channels activated, the roughness right now is set to 0.3. I think we want to turn that up to be pretty matte. Because the lower this is, the shinier it is. And that's not right. We could also just turn off the roughness of this layer entirely. And that way, the underlying layer here is delivering all of the roughness detail. And I think adding the AO pass on top of all of this might actually be good. So let's add another fill layer, drag in the AO pass into the base color. And all we want to do here really is turn all of these other channels off just so we have the color. And then we'll go to the blending options and turn it to multiply. That way these kind of sunken in areas are darkened. Just adds a little bit more definition to everything. I think it's actually still too shiny from this bottom layer. So maybe we do just want to turn on roughness on this fill layer and just turn up the roughness. We don't want to push it too far because we still want to get a little bit of those light hits. But this way we're not seeing the kind of shininess that we were before. Now to add a little bit more warmth into this curvature map, let's go to this fill layer right click and add a filter. Then in the filter button, we'll add color balance. And then in the midtones and highlights, we want to turn up the redness of this. We could also add a little bit more magenta and yellow. Now if I toggle this on and off, you can see a little bit of difference. So here it's quite white, and here's just like a little more orange. Obviously, we can push these values more, including in the shadows. That way it just all blends more, and we're not getting those pure white values coming through. Now if you want, you can go in and paint even more detail. So we'll do a little bit of that. Let's add a new fill layer. Make sure it's on the top. And we'll right click on this little thumbnail and add a black mask. So that way it's totally hidden. And wherever we paint, this color will show through. Because we're painting white on a black mask. So I do want this color to actually be black as well. So now I can go through and paint black in any areas I think should be darker than they are now. And you can see this is already shiny in here. So we need to go back into this layer, turn off everything except for color. That way we're just painting color on here. And this brush is really smooth, so we should get a rougher brush for this. I like these dirt brushes here. They just have a nice roughness and they're very gradual. And once you're happy with your texture, we can go to File, Export Textures. And we have the Spark Air Studio preset. And we'll make sure the size is set to 1K. And then set your output directory here. And then click Export. And as always, we want to double check what we did. We have our diffuse here. The emission looks like it's light or dark magenta for some reason. We have our nice normal map here. And that includes the extra normals we got from that material we imported. And then the ORM for the occlusion, roughness, and metallic. Up next, we're going to hop into Spark.